Turning up the back room from the Mac Museum. Um, here's Lisa. I've had this for ooh, uh, before kids, so it must be about 14, 15 years, maybe a bit longer. Uh, my dad actually picked it up for me um, in central New South Wales. So um, I did plug it in back then and it instantly went pop and a bunch of smoke came out of it. So uh, I sat at the side and haven't done anything with it since. But um, having a look at it, it was um, a filter capacitor that popped. So easy to replace on the power supply. I've done that and I'm ready to plug it in again and I'm a bit nervous. So, no time like the present. There was another filter capacitor on that power supply, but it hadn't cracked. So, it should uh, be okay, but it may crack now. I think the on button's under here. Beat. I've actually never booted a Lisa before, so I'm not sure what it's supposed to do. No cracking or popping. Nothing on the screen though. Oh, hang on. Something on the screen. Checkerboardy type pattern. Which I guess is better than nothing. There are a couple of adjustments back here. Probably none that are going to fix that. No, well, we'll stop the video there, but um, yeah, the, the next steps, power supply is fixed, but need to figure out what's causing this now. Whoa, here the hard drive spin up. Can you hear that? It's got a giant hard drive in here. Ooh, okay, it's turned off. That could be the other filter capacitor. <laughs> yeah, that's a filter capacitor. I should get that outside. <laughs> Whoa, they stink too. Can you unplug the keyboards in? In the front. Oh. And the mouse from the back. <laughs> Just pull it. Yeah, well, I guess if you see old filter capacitors, you should probably replace them. Um, anyway, there you go. Okay, just went and found a mouse because I didn't have one plugged in. Um, and I did get this to somewhat boot before. Uh, but there was a hold problem, vertical hold problem, horizontal hold, some sort of hold problem on the screen, um, which it could be some adjustments for, but let's turn it on again. So it doesn't beep straight away this time, so that's better. Uh, I feel like it's getting further in the test. And then we... So what does it actually say there? Memory two seven O restart continue start from very interesting. Right, we've made some progress on the Lisa. Um, I've really got a, a new enthusiasm to try and get it going. Uh, there's not many parts or information out there, but um, what we've got to recently when we had a bit of a get together here uh, with some help from people online and, and here is we've got it booting into Macworks. 
Um, so I had to adjust some of these potentiometers to get the video to work and it won't put into Lisa OS, which is what I really want, but it, it's still bringing up a memory error, but it is booting into Macworks. So let me just show you where we're at. So it was actually the floppy emu that got us this far. And if I um, pick Lisa, none of these Lisa disks work, but if I pick Macworks, so I'll pick that one, look at the screen. It's come up with a error 70 in the memory, but it lets you continue. So if we continue and say boot from floppy, it starts to access the floppy emu. And then I can select the startup disk on the floppy emu. And then we can see it actually boots into Macworks. So that's great. Um, it still does have that memory error and it errors when trying to boot into Lisa OS. So I really want to boot it into Lisa OS. So I've got a few things in the post this week. I've got, I've been wanting to get this one for ages, but I finally bit the bullet. It's a compact flash replacement for the hard drive, uh, X Profile um, by Vintage Micros. And I have a couple of tested known good memory boards. I've since found out that that error I'm getting could be the slots and not the memory boards, but we'll find out. So I'm going to get installing these and we'll see if we can get Lisa finally booting into Lisa OS. Hooking up the X profile just for testing, you get a video ROM as well. And I'm like, what do you need a video ROM for? I couldn't quite work it out. So I've gone and read the instructions, which is a good idea. And turns out that a lot of the Lisa software is linked to the hardware in your Lisa. And so I've changed it to RAM cards, but the video ROM is to trick the software into to licensing it. So the license on the software looks for the information on this video ROM. So I've got to go put this video ROM on as well. So we'll do that. And then I think we'll be ready to boot and see what happens. Got the X profile hooked up and I've got the set correctly. I'm set correctly and I put the video ROM on the CPU board and I've put the known good RAM in and I haven't booted it yet um, I'm not expecting the keyboard to work because that wasn't working before hopefully I can fix that if that doesn't work but let's turn it on got power and lights on the X profile board. What's Lisa gonna do? Testing the RAM. Don't think it's got this far before. I've got the Lisa OS compact flash card in there. So with any luck, it's trying to boot from that, hopefully. Oh, this is looking good. Mouse is working. Oh, 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 oh. Clock's not set correct. I can live with that. Here we go. This is the first time since I've had this that it's booted Lisa OS. And I have no idea how to use it uh, other than what I've seen on YouTube. So I, I might have to, I, I think you tear off a piece of paper. No, oh, that didn't work. Uh, file. I'll 
just try double clicking it. Don't think this works. Use the tool, tear off a piece of paper. I'm gonna have to do some research, I think. Uh, there's some documents in here. Maybe there's a document that's already... I can just use this for now. No idea what sort of document this is. It was on the compact flashcard. This is a Lisa. And as I suspected, the keyboard's not working. So I might have to do some work on that. I hope it's not the keyboard itself. What I might do is just go and research how to use a, a Lisa and I'll put all this together properly and then we'll do a bit of a tour afterwards. But that, that's fantastic. It's, it's all working. It's great. Right, this is the inside of the Lisa keyboard. And I can see some of these foam pads have stuck to the connectors there. And if I look down here basically all these foam pads with foil are all worn out so that's kind of good news because hopefully I can just replace those foam pads and everything will be good again um, we will see so here's an old donor keyboard and it has uh, the same foil and foam little discs but as you can see, so I've started taking them off. I've replaced that one and it is much, much better. So I'll keep going. It's a bit fiddly, but it should hopefully bring this keyboard back to life. All of the foam and foil pads have been replaced. I've cleaned up the contacts. There's one a bit corroded there. Hopefully that is still good. Everything else looks good. Time to reassemble. So before I permanently install the uh, compact flash hard drive replacement, I thought I'd try and boot off the original hard drive uh, just to see if, with good RAM, if it would boot. It's also good just to listen to the sound of such a large hard drive. It's almost silent without the hard drive installed. Bring up that same error that was before. You can see the lights blinking, it's trying to do something, but. Sounds like it's getting louder, but it's still not working. Oh. I think we'll call it there, we'll turn it off, and if anyone's got any ideas of uh, what would be causing that. I don't really need this to work now, but I guess it'd just be interesting to um, see what this was originally used for. Like, what's it doing out in the middle of New South Wales in Orange? Um, anyway, uh, I'll now install, uh, remove this drive and install the X profile card permanently now I know that's working 
Uh, the floppy drive is completely seized as well. So I might remove that. If I don't uh, clean it up now, try and unstick it, it'll probably go back in there and never get done. So I'll have a quick look at that as well. getting close to finished took the keyboard home last night got it going replaced all those foam and foil pads works great cleaned up the floppy drive this morning and with any luck there we go that's working as well so we're getting close with the Lisa it's actually fantastic I wasn't sure whether I'd ever get it going so now that it's actually going, I've had a couple things just set aside uh, that'll really finish it off. The first one is a Lisa badge. Doesn't really belong with this model, but I think I can make it work. I think it'll look nice on there. And the second one... is an original Lisa mouse. So the Lisa, when it first came out, the Lisa one came with this mouse and at some stage, Apple swapped over to the Macintosh mouse. So I think Lisa deserves a good mouse, the original Apple mouse. So let's add those items and then we might put Lisa to work and see what we can do. Alright, so the plan is, now we've got Lisa going, got the camera set up here, and the plan is to try and draw our logo onto Lisa. I don't know how I'm going to go, but got to make, uh, got to make her do some work now that, um, now that she's running for the first time in 15 years. So I will just uh, time lapse this, because there's no point in me talking the whole way through it. Bye. 